Well hello, I've been looking at lost model beepers for like years now, or certainly feels that way. So I thought today I'd look at what I've used in the past and have a bit of a roundup. But before we get into it, a quick reminder to please comment down below, like or dislike if you didn't like this video, click on the subscribe icon if you haven't already, and don't forget to click on the little bell which tells you when I've uploaded stuff. And also, don't forget that alternative medicine that works is just called medicine, because at least some of those will really help me out. Right, let's get into it. So I'm splitting Lost Model Finders into three distinct sections. In the first section, I have what I call the standalone, and this originated with the Drone Keeper. So we'll call them the Drone Keeper style things. They're, they don't need to be wired in, they work on their own. The second section, I'm gonna call the Hellgate style buzzer. This is basically something that needs to be wired into your Betaflight flight controller style board and doesn't work on its own, of which there are now quite a lot of these. And finally, we have the little strange quirky ones, which probably not many people will be using now, but I'll cover them anyway, because people keep talking about it. So I have to thank Adam, who's one of my Patreon supporters, which you can, of course, join the Happy Patreon family. Look, there's a link there. He works in measuring sound levels, so he gave me a few tips about how to do this better, even when I'm just using my phone. Now, I measured the decibel levels before, so what I've done this time is be a little bit more precise about how I'm measuring. So I'm having a gap of 10 centimeters or 100 mil between my microphone on my phone and the point at which the sound comes out of whatever beeper I've got. It's a little bit awkward when I've got things like the Hellgate which is in there but you know I do my best under circumstances and even if we say that you know the, the phone app is not super accurate. It at least gives a comparison between all the buzzers, which one's louder than the others. Now we'll start with the standalone beepers, and I kind of like these ones, because when I fly a lot of quads, I like to be able to just attach this to the quad, turn it on, and go without thinking about wiring things in. Um, it kind of suits me because I get in lots of quads to review, and I don't have time to put them all in, but it doesn't necessarily suit everybody, so I'm, I'm just presenting what I like here, and of course I'm leaving you to make your own minds up. Now, the way the standalone beepers work is by an accelerometer. They all have this in common, and they kind of need it to work this way. If the buzzer is moving, the accelerometer says, OK, we're still flying, therefore it's OK. Um, but if that movement stops for a length of time, it will start to alarm. And they all have inbuilt um, default times as well. So I always get thrown the, like, what if you land in a tree and the tree's blowing around? How do you know where it is? After a certain amount of time, they will all alarm as well to say, okay, something's gone wrong here. No quad flies for half an hour, let's start beeping. So we'll start with the original. This is the Drone Keeper Mini, and I've used it for quite a long time. Uh, it's South Korean company Niche Mall, and they've gone through several iterations of this. What's great about it, it, it's pretty loud. I measured this at 103.8 decibels, emits a single tone, has a built-in LiPo. On the downside, charging it, it uses a USB adapter that goes into these little pins, uh, which isn't brilliant. You could change the settings, but you need an extra bit to do it, and it doesn't work as a beta flight buzzer, so you can't wire it in that way. It was, however, very solid, uh, a very good piece of kit. Unfortunately, it's no longer sold by Nishmol because th the restrictions in sending LiPo batteries through the post. So if you've got one of these, look after it, because it's it's really quite a nice little thing. So Nishmol followed up that with the Drone Keeper Micro, which was their uh-oh, we can't send LiPo batteries, what are we going to do? And their answer was to come up with this, which used either a little LR44 coin cell or the LIR1254 uh, rechargeable basis of those. So on the plus point, this is very solid. Uh, this is, I don't know if it's aluminium or something, but you can't squash it. You can tie that down as hard as you like and that's not gonna have a problem. It doesn't make any more waterproof though. There's, there's a hole here for where the sand comes out. So if that floods with water, it's not gonna do it any favors. It's not as loud, getting about 95 decibels. The bad thing about it was charging and the setup was a massive pain. If you got the rechargeable IR1254, which you'd have to get separately, 
you then have to buy a separate coin cell charger and if you wanted to do any of the settings it was this really quite awkward thing that had to be lined up against certain aspects of that top thing and then pressed in which was really quite tricky to do and didn't work awfully well. Now it's still available but I wouldn't really recommend it um, unless you had a real need that you know you wanted to try and squish it in something or you needed something solid to stick it down because basically it's been superseded in all ways by the third iteration which is called the Drone Keeper Mini 2. Now what they did in this one they capped the uh, rechargeable coin cell idea but they put the charging circuit inside and they had a normal USB um, adapter there so you could just plug in a USB cable and you could charge your coin cell. Now normally I'd also say oh well of course you had to buy the coin cell separately but I do notice at the moment they're saying it includes a battery when you buy it so perhaps the restrictions on sending these little tiny coin cells aren't as bad. So the other good thing is it is the loudest of every single buzz that I've tested. I'm getting 104.9 decibels which is really loud. Also I like the fact that when it beeps it doesn't give a single beep it gives a multi beep and that makes things much easier to pick it out in the field amongst all the sort of bird noises and other things. It's much more distinct than just a single one every few seconds. Uh, they got it right again about being able to change the settings. There's a cable supplied in this and you can uh, basically you plug it in and touch some of these contacts and that can change some of the settings like the time for it to alarm and the type of setting it's in. It also works in a wired mode um, again comes with a cable so you can plug it into a PWM signal and if that signal is lost it will alarm doesn't work in beta flight though. Pretty good all-rounder very solid I do like this one. So the only one that is not made by Nishmol and is a standalone beeper so it has an accelerometer in it yeah, is this one and this is the buzzy boo which is made by t-beacon now i have to say this is a pretty impressive thing because it seems to try and one-up niche mole in every single point it can still uses a lipo battery because shipping from russia doesn't seem to have the same restrictions Um, it is pretty loud, I get 101.7 decibels out of it and what I like about it is it's multi-tonal so it doesn't just beep the same tone twice, it had two different tones. These are actually alterable, um, so the, the one drawback of that is you alter it by this sort of, um, it makes a lot and you have to stop it at the time where you think you can listen to it better. So that takes a bit of trial and error because I managed to stop it at places where it wasn't as loud. But the idea is not to stop it where it's loud, it's to stop it where you think you can hear it the best. So tones that work for you will work. But anyway, pretty loud all the same. So aside from having the accelerometer, it also works as a beta flight beeper, which none of the others do. And it works as a PWM one. So if you lose PWM and you're in a plane, uh, you can use it for that, which is very good. Settings are all done via this little button so you can go through and change a whole host of settings using that which is pretty impressive. The only drawbacks in this one is probably the charging. So if we compare it to the Drone Keeper MIDI 2, uh, this has a nice little recessed USB lead this comes with some pin headers that you can solder on and the reason I soldered them on is that was the only way I was going to get a charge in there. Um, there's no charging cable included what I have to do is use an old uh, ESC and put the normal servo cable on there to supply it with 5 volts until it charges up uh, which is a bit of a pain it would be nicer if it had some nice little interface there that you could plug into and charge it that way so that's the only downside and that extra bit of sticky out thing is obviously a bit bigger I mean you could of course uh, solder in something else but you know you still need to connect it to something to charge it somewhere but this is probably the best all-rounder in terms of its features and its loudness although the drone finder mini 2 is slightly less hassle to do things and is a bit louder so a bit of a toss-up between those two so let's move on now to the hellgate style buzzer 
Um, Hellgate came out and it was the first of these little battery back buzzers that you plug into Beta Flight and when it loses power, it starts to beep, simple as that. Now, my Hellgate is actually in this quad at the moment. So it was a little bit tricky to test, but um, we kind of did our best in trying to get the amount of space right. So what I noticed about all of uh, these style ones is they're not as loud as any of the standalone ones. The Hellgate comes out at 93.9 decibels, still pretty loud. It gives um, multiple beeps, which I like. Uh, and the other good thing about it is, compared to all the other styles of these, it's very well documented. None of the other beepers tend to think about anything other than beta flight. Uh, the Hellgate instructions cover uh, race flight, or flight one as it now is, and KISS. The others you have to kind of try and work that out. It also has the best implementation of disarming. With this style of beeper, you either going to have um, a, a button to press, or in the case of the Hellgate, it's you plug a LiPo back in for a certain amount of time and take it out. The, the reason I like it on the Hellgate is it's like a one to three second thing. So you plug in, plug out, you hear this beep, 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 and that means it's disarmed. And that's that's been the best, because you don't have to count. It's literally you plug in, plug out, and, and you're good to go. So the, the big feature of the Hellgate is how long it's designed to beep for. It's, it says on the website three days plus. Uh, I know the, the guys that tested it have said they've got over a week out of it. But the reason that works is because it alters the amount of time between beeps. So when it starts off, it's like every three seconds. And then after a couple of hours, it's every five seconds, 10 seconds, and ends up being like every 30 seconds. Um, I kind of question the usefulness of that because when something goes down, those first couple of hours is when you're really trying to find it. If you can't find it after that, it's you're like, is it lost forever? I mean, if you're going a huge distance and it goes down a long way away, perhaps that will be useful. I kind of question how useful having something that will last that long is, but that, that's up to you guys. On the downside, it's pretty expensive now when you compare it to what's out there, and that's because everybody basically clone the idea there's even like open source implementations of this style of buzzer but yeah it still comes up quite a lot more expensive than the other stuff but it's you know it's a very solid implementation of it next up is the full speed lucky box buzzer which is this one um, and this was kind of the one of the first i say copies implementations of of what hellgate did very similar sort of style um you need to solder it in. It's got a button here to do disarming and mode changing as well. Gets a, a good sound out of it. 95.7 decibels is what I got. And you've got a couple of settings you can alter by holding down this button. You can change um, how often it actually beep so where the Hellgate changed the time between beeps you can set this and default is every three seconds and the battery will then last about two and a half hours you can change it so for example it beeps every uh, 30 seconds and then this lasts for 12 hours uh, again I would just say every three seconds and, and try and find it quickly is best just does a single tone though which I don't find as easy to pick out as like a multiple uh, beep or a, a multiple tone that would be better but price is very good. Biggest downside on this I found was the disarming. If you use the plug-in power and, and power out to disarm, you need to plug in between eight and 10 seconds before you unplug again. And that count to hold in your head is really quite awkward. It, trying to get that time right, uh, I've been plug-in and unplug-in and plug-in and unplug-in and it's just a hassle. Um, it should be like, you know, one to five seconds, something like that. That would be the ultimate. So I, I always ended up using the the button. You can you can press the button three times and that will disarm it. Of course, that means it has to be accessible. If it's buried in the quad, it's less accessible. So be wary of that one. So after full speed came the original Vifly Finder, which is this one. Now they set out to try and get the loudest thing they could. And as such, it was quite a bit bigger. If you compare those two sizes, uh, you notice Vifly is big, and that's because it has a big sounder. Beep. 
In my test, this original one came out at 100.8 decibels, so it hits that 100 dB mark, which they're after. Um, the disarming is better, three to six seconds, uh, plug and unplug, which you can handle. Uh, it does have a single tone, which is not as nice to pick out. Uh, it does have a little port here, so what you do with this one is you plug a cable in and you sell that on your beta flight board. So you had the option of making a wiring harness you could move between quads and then obviously move this around as you went. Fairly solid, but it's already been discontinued because after just a couple of months they came out with this one. This is the Vifind 2 uh, and I've got the cable attached so you can see that. This came out slightly louder in my test at 101.1 decibels. And what they also did is add PWM support. So you could put it in a plane um, and you could either put it on a switch to uh, sound or if it lost a PWM signal, it will alarm. It does a multiple beep, which I like better. Those two beeps, much easier to pull out than uh, one beep in a field. And it adds here, it's got this very bright LED. So if it's dark, it actually has that LED that comes on and you should be able to hopefully find it a little bit easier. Now, generally speaking, I would say that at the moment the Vifly 2 has the edge over all the other Hellgate style buzzers. It's got a few more extra features, it's very loud and that's good. The only problem it's got going for it is the size. It has to have that size to get that in, but if you look at where I've got this little Hellgate buzzer, getting that in that same gap isn't quite gonna fit. So just be aware that the dimensions in this one means you can't put it into a, a particularly low profile frame. That's the thing it's got going against it. So let's talk about the slightly wild and wacky styles of things we've got. Um, a while ago, I covered this one, the GoFly uh, battery protector. It was actually sort of a multifunctional thing. It had LEDs at the back. It would tell you the battery voltage here and you'd plug in a 4S uh, LiPo balance lead. And after seven minutes, it would just start to beep. And then the trick was you could put a battery on it, you could put the battery stack round in such a way that if the battery disconnected, it would stay connected to this and then it would beep away. And you know, it was good. It was 98.9 dispels, very loud. And this came out before any of the cheaper Hellgate style buzzers. So pretty good for a while. But at the moment, I would say there's no real point in it now because the price of the Hellgate style buzzers have come down to such uh, an extent that this always risks that it might pull out on the balance lead as well. So it's not gonna be that good, it adds a lot more extra weight. It's quite nice though if you want extra lights and you want a, a readout on your voltage, but there you go, a bit of a wild and wacky one. The last one I will mention is the locator. Now, some people will say it's a little bit unfair to mention this one as a beeper because it comes with this thing. You turn this on and it will basically give you a direction finder. You sort of go like this and where the lights go up um, and the beep gets stronger, it means you're you're getting closer towards your your tag, and this is the tag you put on there. When you get to a certain point, the tag then starts beeping, and the idea is you can hopefully pick it up by then. Now, the reason I mention this one is because whenever I put out some sort of finder video, a few people start saying, hey, get the locator, it's great, it works brilliantly. I didn't think it did. Um, the range is very restricted. Uh, if you've got great open ground, you will get reasonable range. However, if you go into bushes or any undergrowth, the signal is compromised and that cuts down to like 20 to 30 meters at best. So you've really got to be in the zone with this little thing before it even finds anything. And that's the problem. And as far as the beeping goes when you get close in, it's really quiet, 65.4 decibels, which is not even sort of normal talking sound. Um, pretty expensive as well at 60 pounds, I couldn't find dollars for it, but you get one of these and two of these. Uh, you know, if you lose things in your house, it's great. I can't recommend it at all for lost models. People are jumped on it because they're like, if something beeps, somebody will steal my model, but you know, you need to find a better flying site. So that is my roundup. What am I recommending? Well, basically I recommend you have some sort of battery back buzzer. If you like the standalone stuff like me, I recommend the Buzzybo and the Drone Keeper Mini 2. 
uh, kind of depending if whether you find this a pain. If you don't, it does a lot more than this. If you want ease of use, then this is probably pretty easy. As far as the Hellgate style beeper goes, the Vifly Finder 2, if you can fit it on. Um, if not, something small, like the full speed beeper is pretty good and there's loads of separate clones, but please put something on there because what we don't want to hear about is people losing their quads when it's like a couple of grams will potentially save it if your battery comes out. And what you will find is probably you put these on and your battery never comes out, but you know what? It's just that extra tiny bit of weight and it still works as a beeper, so it's not too bad, is it? Anyway, I hope that video was helpful and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.